Um, as a strategic designer, I actually, one of the main accomplishments I had is implementing design thinking into our business strategy processes, really influences into tactics, uh, where are we going with our businesses, uh, making sure that the strategy is also driven by a customer, an outside in point of view, benefits that we want to deliver. That's one thing. The other thing that I felt as an achievement was more to do with design strategy, as in strategy for design. Um, we knew that we had to start evolving our competences to uh, you know, uh, stay in touch and keep uh, up in our game if it comes to data, intelligence, connected product services. Um, and so we actually uh, started to invest in our data visualization capabilities, but we had trouble scaling it beyond our innovation program. We also invest in academic collaboration and start investigating new design methods. Um, and then with the what I think is the achievement, is actually starting a team around this topic and starting a team around data-enabled design. And that's what I will talk about uh, the remainder of this uh, presentation. Um, to frame the challenge, because actually in both the strategic and the data-enabled design work, they are actually supported uh, by the same challenge. And we use a paradigm framework to kind of explain the shifting values and the new challenges that come with that. So what you see is, uh, first on the left, it's the industrial paradigm. And the industrial paradigm, and this is still something that we are in every day, in a company like Philips, we, we still do business as usual, let's say, where we have, actually have a product, you put it literally or not literally in a box, and you receive money for it. And by improving on your production, by improving the perception, or improving actually the product, you increase your business. We moved into the experience paradigm, like in the 90s, where we actually started to bring these uh, different product services together into branding, into media, into communication, right? And um, the Nikes, uh, the Coca-Colas of this world are the biggest example of success in this paradigm. Um, not all companies actually made a successful shift uh, into that area. Um, what our customers are looking for is they want great experiences. They want to belong to a particular lifestyle. And now we've embarked on a new paradigm where actually people are not longer looking to be part of that lifestyle. No, they want to create a life that's uniquely their own. So they're looking to connect and build a life on what they want it to be. And they want that, the experience they have to evolve and grow along with them. Um, so this is characterized by value exchange in a network. That is a huge difference opposed to the first two uh, paradigms where actually value exchange is linear. And then the last one, the transformation paradigm, which is very, very much in its uh, first uh, uh, steps, is where we take the network view more to a local uh, environment and where we are seeing people want to life, uh, live a meaningful life with respect uh, for the roles of others and the environment. And business models become more outcome-driven uh, rather than uh, uh, in terms of value of money only. So uh, on product or expressed in products or services. So this challenge uh, that we have in the middle is that we go from this linear to networked value exchange. And you need a different mindset and you need different tools to actually design, but also to do business in this, uh, in this, uh, in this new uh, world. So this is kind of the frame of reference uh, that you will see my, uh, my talk about data and annual design of. Let's also set something straight. So uh, I'll just make sure that we're all on the same page. Philips is a health technology uh, uh, player. So we actually scale down quite a bit to that essence. So we house a set of personal health and healthcare businesses uh, in which we actually set out to improve the lives of people in the health context. And we do this uh, with a set of businesses ranging from mother and childcare to image-guided therapy, from toothbrushes to precision diagnost diagnostics, right? Um, so um, quite a bit of different activities uh, going on, but really clearly getting a focus toward uh, health uh, technology. And what we see is that these businesses are increasingly asked to deliver uh, value in a horizontal rather than a vertical uh, manner. So we want to go from this product 
uh, to the solution. We want to go from this touch point to the system. So you can feel we are embarking on the new paradigms, and we are kind of on the tipping point, which is not very sharp tipping point, where this company that came from being um, a, a holding company with a huge amount of successful businesses into this operating company in which we really want to deliver solutions that help our customers to improve outcomes in health. Uh, and we do this by focusing on the uh, health continuum. We really uh, think that health happens in different parts of the world and in different uh, locations with different people, with different professionals. Um, and we focus our solutions at parts and across uh, all of these parts of that uh, health continuum. What you, of course, need is connected care and health informatics if you want to start uh, being there in all of these uh, different elements. And that's also where uh, uh, data-enabled design uh, comes in. It's really about using that data in a, you know, in a designer fashion to make sense of that world and understand how we can actually um, connect up these parts and also to understand how we not uh, only improve outcomes in terms of clinical or operational outcomes, but also how do we really stand for improving experience outcomes. So as a team, we stand actually for two things. The first thing is that we make data meaningful. So we set out to truly understand the value of data for our users and ensure that propositions that encompass data are meaningful. And second, we really set out to use data as creative material. We actually think it's not used enough as a creative material, like we use our pen and paper. Um, so we really work with data, get our hands on it. But designing with data, of course, reaches further than the data, right? It's not about the data itself. It's really about how we use it to build these differentiating uh, propositions. And actually, this topic reaches then further into what are you going to do with that data. And then you come into, well, a lot of hurt uh, terminology, but it has to do with designing for the Internet of Things, designing for your artificial intelligence, for personalized systems, ecosystems, right? So how do you do that, and how do you use the data and the intelligence, the artificial intelligence, uh, as your tool? It's not so easy, necessarily. Um, let's see, um, there are three challenges that were defined by uh, some academic colleagues or peers um, that actually uh, uh, interviewed quite a few uh, experience uh, uh, designer, uh, user experience designers, and they came up, actually, with three challenges they see in this field of designing they uh, more tackled it from a machine learning point of view, but I take a little bit broader into data and uh, intelligence. And that um, it's actually for designers, and I think this goes for our design community, uh, as well as for the research they did, that it's actually still difficult to envision what data and intelligence can or cannot do. So either we are naive in thinking that everything is possible, or we actually miss opportunities because we just don't really get the grips, uh, the, 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 uh, to grips with it. The second challenge is that actually designers are not trained to work with, uh, with this technology, to work with data and intelligence as a design material. So one, it's not part of our curriculum, right? And second, because of its technology nature, it's very hard to grasp as a material. So how are we going to do that? And the third one is that designers are not enough involved in the ethical and experience discussion. So what is our opinion about how do you actually experience these technologies and how do you experience these propositions that are revolving around data and intelligence? So in our team, we are trying to tackle these three uh, um, uh, challenges by five things, by five ways of working or five goals. And the first one is we are gathering and working with data in all our projects, so we really get our hands on it. The second one is uh, we are using new tools, uh, existing tools in a new context, but also building new tools to actually go from the data to the insight. We are integrating uh, service design uh, capabilities with data design capabilities to really accelerate on building these differentiating propositions. We are growing the impact of our data visualization uh, uh, capability, both as a tool for working with data, as well as a proposition in itself. And five, we are building the canvas, canvases and tools to make exploring with data more widely uh, available, 
and also to make it possible to start exp uh, exploring uh, intelligence from a design point of view.